My name is Stephen Kotelke from O'Connell's OBM and this is a presentation on cloud accounting software, in particular Xero. With technology constantly evolving and having changed a fair bit since our clients were set up on their original software, whether that be MyOb, QuickBooks, BankLink or another software, this presentation looks to table one of the software leaders in the cloud accounting space, Xero. We've had a keen eye on the evolution of accounting software into the cloud and are seeing the benefits of better integration with banks and believe that a shift to a cloud-based accounting program will best achieve benefits for you. When compared to your existing software, a cloud-based program will help to save time which will free up you for more chargeable time or more time personally, whether that be at home, spending time with the kids or doing more fun things. It will also help to simplify your record keeping so you can keep your, see your financial position clearly. It will increase the accuracy of your records to minimize the BAS reporting errors, etc. And it also means under a cloud accounting software, you can access it anywhere and anytime. It's available on certain devices like iPhones. It automatically backs up and is accessible via advisors as well in real time which is, enables up-to-date data for advice and management assistance. One of the better programs in the cloud accounting market space at this time is Xero, which some of our clients are starting to migrate to. We are noticing that all of the software providers are going to the cloud computing area, but this software has been there for a period and has all the issues and problems ironed out and for here and now is one of the most helpful. What I'd like to do now is show you some of the key benefits of this software. The first key benefit is that it is a cloud-based accounting software, which means you can access it anywhere, anytime. And you'll be able to access your software anywhere that you can have an internet connection. The next key benefit is the dashboard screen. This is a one-page view on how the business is traveling. This page here is the dashboard. What you can see on this screen is that it outlines what the bank accounts are that have been loaded into Xero. Here you can see what the statement balance is and then there's also some unreconciled transactions that we need action in. For example, on this bank account, we can see that we've reconciled all the transactions so no action is needed. It also outlines some accounts that we want to keep an eye on. These are set up in the original uh, implementation process and we can outline what specific accounts we want to look at. So this could be sales, personal loan accounts, and other similar accounts as well. It also gives a snapshot of all the invoices that have been issued and outlines some that are draft and some that are overdue as well. So you can see, okay, what's expecting to be money coming in in the future. Similarly, it has all the expenses that are going to be happening. So these are for bills that have been entered and here you can see it outlines what are some of the current bills and also that there are some that are overdue. The key benefits of Xero is, the process, is in the processing and reconciling bank accounts and transactions. This has many functionalities including automations and bank rules and we also have developed a tagging concept. When it comes to looking at the bank accounts in Xero, it's an easy process. We can see on the left here, we have the two different bank accounts that have transactions going through. What we can do is actually click into one of these accounts and see how the Xero works with the bank feeds. What you can see on this screen is that we're actually getting information fed straight from, our, from your bank in regard to the transactions and the transactions details. This is what is showing up on the left hand side over here. What this will mean is that we can cut back on the amount of manual data entry that is required to get the information into the software. For example, you'll only have to enter in the data once, that being in your internet banking, rather than having to enter it twice over in the Xero software. It also gives us the ability to set up automations and some smarts around how to allocate transactions automatically. It also shows that how easy it is to keep this bank account reconciled throughout the year rather than doing it not so frequently, for example, once a year. What I'll show you now is the benefits of this software and how it has functionality for automations within it. 
On this screen, as mentioned, you can see on the left hand side we have the bank statement information. So this is fed directly from the bank. On the right hand side, we have certain things that have been picked up from items that are being already created in Xero, or where we can code items to. For example, allocate an amount to accounting fees. The first example is where we have created some invoices in the software. For example, this Ridgeway University. These people here owe us money and we've created the invoice probably a month ago if we had 30 day terms. And then you can see here that the payment has come through into the bank account. What the software has done has outlined that, okay, yep, we have this invoice previously. The amount has come in and it also has matched the reference and also the name as well. So it's picked up that, okay, that's a match. What we can then do is we can say, yep, that is correct and go okay. That will mean that we've coded that transaction and it has been allocated correctly. Similarly for this next one, um, this is a bill that we've entered and what you can see is we've paid this bill, it's now applying it here. So it's going to delete that off our accounts payable now. Xero also has the functionality of suggested coding. So for example this NAB bank fee that's come through, this will probably be a fee that happens regularly. What the software knows is that previously when that has come through we've coded it to our bank fee account. So what it's done here is it's offered some suggested coding. So it said, okay, it's a NAB bank fee. We're going to code it to bank fees. Is this correct? We agree with that, so then we can just go okay. The next one is in regards to creating bank rules. So as you can see here, and what you'll find is people are creatures of habit. So we'll shop at the same places, spend the same way. For example, this one, this transaction here, when we go to 7-Eleven, we'll probably say that, okay, every time we go to 7-Eleven, it should always be coded to the same account. What they've done behind the scenes is set up a bank rule. So if I was to click on this rule here, we'll be able to see what they've done behind the scenes. This here means that every time that the payee contains 7-Eleven, we'll be looking to code the item to our office expenses. So if we were to go back and that's where we want it to code to, all we have to do is go OK. What I'll show you now is how easy it is to set up a bank rule as well. So for example this one here where it's Copper Street Bakery, we've got two transactions here and every time that we go to Copper Street Bakery, we want it to go to a certain place. So to create these rules, and this is what you do in the initial few months to get these all set up, so then going forward, it would do it automatically for you. You can click on Create Rule. We can go when the payee contains Copper Street Bakery. We want to code this item to our office expenses. We will change this to be from the reference, so that means we won't have to fill out anything when that transaction comes up, and then we'll go save. Okay, so if I now go and jump into that bank account, you'll see now that we have the OK symbols coming up for the Copper Street Bakeries. I originally set the rule up only on this first one, so we know that one's correct, so we can go OK. And then the next one has also come up with an OK. So it's matched the same details and said, OK, we want to put that to office expenses. So we can approve that as well. What there also is, there's a functionality um, to do a find and match. So for example, this smart agency, we know that this amount here relates to two bills that they've paid. Obviously the software can doesn't pick up that it's done that, so we can actually do that in a fairly easy way. So if we go find and match, and find that smart agency, it relates to this one and this one, then what we can do 
we can see that that all matches and all works, so we can go reconcile. You'll note that as we click on the reconcile or OK buttons, they drop off this screen. So if we were to jump back to our dashboard, we'll see that this now shows reconcile 21 items before it had a few more than that. One of the key concepts that we try and integrate into the setup process is, set, is a tagging concept. So we'll provide information on how to use your internet banking and what details to put in there. So when we come to do bank rules, we'll be able to automatically code the items. This will help from an efficiency point of view. So if we get smarter around what we put into our internet banking, the software behind the scenes should automatically be able to allocate items for us. The next benefit that I'm going to cover is the money coming in. This is for when we're entering invoices. So from the dashboard, you'll see the money coming in area, and what we do is click on Add Sales Invoice. This section here is similar to a lot of other accounting software, how you enter in or create an invoice. So we could start entering in some information here and let's say it's for central copiers enter in today's date we'll say it's due in 30 days so we can say plus 30 and it will work it out what we can then do is say that we've sold this amount of time create the invoice and then we can just go approve If we were to jump back to the dashboard and go to our money coming in area, we will see in the awaiting payment area, this new invoice now has been created for central copiers. Similarly to the money going, coming in section is the money going out section. This is where we'll be entering expenses. So we jump to our dashboard, we go to the money going out section and click add bill. And then we can start filling in the details. So we can say it's for ABC furniture, enter today's date, it's due in 30 days. The amount is $500, we'll say that that's the inclusive amount. We can say it's for a desk, one desk, $500, and that's for our office expenses. And then click approve. What we can do, jump back to our dashboard, go to our money going out section, and then click on awaiting payment, then we should see our item for ABC Furniture for $500. One of the other key areas in Xero is the Xero Help Center. It is easy to understand instructions and also some detailed instructional videos. From the Xero website we can click on Help up the top and then go to Help Center. Here there is a lot of functionality. We have some zero essentials, zero how-to videos, functionality down the side to pinpoint which area you're having an issue with, and there's also the search functionality as well. This is a very helpful area with solving all problems. Some of the other aspects of zero that are pretty beneficial, but won't be covered in this section, is the helpful reporting functionalities, the built-in payroll, Zero add-ons and many more. The add-ons are of particular interest to a lot of people. These are like apps that people can tap into the Zero data and they can have some helpful add-on functionality. This can include better reporting tools, 
turning paper invoices into zero data, and timesheeting applications that automatically feed into the software. We understand that making a change like this can be difficult, so our role in this process is to keep it simple and hassle-free for you as much as possible. Throughout the process, we'll attend to the implementation of the software with some input from you. We will train you up on the software, provide ongoing support and resources to help you with using the software, and we'll also drip feed tips and tricks, useful ideas and other aspects that may help you run your business more efficiently throughout the post implementation strategy. If you want to know more or have any questions like how would you you specifically benefit from Xero, what is involved in making the switch, how much will Xero cost you, or you're interested in using Xero, or have any other questions, please feel free to contact me, my details are on screen at the moment, or contact anyone at O'Connell's IBM and they'll be able to help you.